What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Sit Down Saturday. Today, we're going to talk about something that I honestly didn't really want to get into a whole lot. Not not on this platform, but I get so many requests to do it that, you know me, man, for the people. So we're going to get into it. I'm going to try to shed as much uh, light as I can on it. I did a little research. Some would brag about it, not me. In order to do so, we got to do the accessories of Sit Down Saturday, which is the house cleaning. Somebody complained about the house cleaning last week in the comments. Look, in the words of Joe Pesci and the Irishman, it's what it is. You tell him it's what it is. Love that movie. I can't get enough of it. No kidding. All honesty, all week I've been on some... I mean, I've been walking different with that thing on. Anyway, let's talk about last week's Sit Down Saturday, the raiding or riding or whatever the case may be. The overwhelming majority of comments were, but they're huge in Japan. And I, I hear you. I, I hear you. I really do. You know when somebody does this right before they're getting ready to talk to you that they're not, they got some <laughs> retort coming. Everybody plays to the numbers in the same regard because everybody wants to be successful. It's not as if Devastator would not be successful in Japan. I appreciated all the feedback though. It was good. I, I liked a lot of the points you guys were making, even if I disagree. A lot of them were thought out and stuff. I dig that. I like that. The Kathy Kennedy one, I think I'm good there. I think I said all I had to say. There were some people that disagreed. I do want to make it clear though, just because you don't like Star Wars doesn't mean that you hate women or something like that. Sometimes that argument comes up. I, I don't subscribe to that at all. I did get in my bag a little bit this past week on Nerd Rage and I started screaming and yelling and carrying on. But you know, it's a passionate table that we sit at. But yeah, I appreciate, I got a lot of feedback, people saying like, look man, I didn't even know she did half these movies, so that's what's up. DJD Combiner, pretty good, pretty good, and I think far less sacrifices were made in order to pull off the nonsensical gimmick of the Combiner, so well done, I tip my hat to them, that's a good company, they know what they're doing. This week on Patreon, review-wise, I did NECA's Rocksteady and Bebop, as well as there was a Four Dummies Uncut and a couple other things on there. Of course, the shirts are available on Teespring, holidays are coming, I tell your wife you want a shirt, Mac, and it's cold, so get a hoodie. And... I still have blankets and stuff available. So if you're looking for something like that, you know, give the link to your wife subtly. Or your husband, you know, to the four ladies that watch. How y'all doing? All right, let's get into this. Hoarding, right? Which is a larger question of when does collecting become unhealthy? Now, in order to talk about hoarding, let's first define it, okay? Hoarding is described as a persistent difficulty discarding or parting with possessions because of a perceived need to save them. Generally vague, right? But what could it mean for us, a perceived need? Perhaps fear of an item not being released in any other format. Perhaps saving packaging with the intention of possibly having to sell one day, even though you know you probably won't sell it. All of these things do play a part, right? And we can take the raw ingredients of that and apply it to what we do. The funny thing about this is the actual literal value of it means nothing. It's all about the perceived value, what value we place upon it. A cardboard shipping box has absolutely no value, but if we perceive that that value is of worth when we go to sell it of something that we're not intending to sell and we're saving it for that cause, the ingredients are there to suggest hoarding. For those who hoard, the quantity of their collected items sets them apart from other people. Commonly hoarded items may be newspapers, magazines, paper and plastic bags, cardboard boxes, photographs, household supplies, food, and clothing. So this kind of gets into the more stereotypical idea of hoarding, right? Like when we see it in these reality shows or whatever and there's like a hundred magazines or newspapers stacked up in all corners and it looks like a huge huge fire hazard that the house could just spontaneously combust at any given moment. And usually, hopefully, that's not what we're doing. Hopefully, we're being responsible and that we're buying those things in order to kind of appreciate them, right? If you have a stack of magazines haphazardly thrown into the corner, you're not really appreciating those items. They're just there because you're afraid of losing them. If you have your stuff out where you can see it and view it and kind of get some sort of appreciation or joy from it, that's not, I don't think, the same thing. However, according to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, Hoarding can be related to compulsive buying, such as never passing up a bargain, the compulsive acquisition of free items, or the compulsive search for perfect or unique items. Now that last sentence definitely sets off our spider sense a bit, right? But at the core of all of this, to the credit of the source that I'm using, it's mental health, right, at some level. So. Whenever you're looking at a problem that's a health issue, whether it be mental, physical, whatever the case may be, emotional, like I'm a firm believer in emotional health and in, in addition to mental health and physical health, and I believe in spiritual health as well. Like I think that there's multiple layers in our body reacts a different way. That's a, that's a conversation for another time, perhaps on nerve rage. But the symptoms are important. And the symptoms of hoarding are usually an inability to throw away possessions, severe anxiety when attempting to discard items, great difficulty categorizing or organizing possessions, indecision 
decision about what to keep or where to put things, distress such as feeling overwhelmed or embarrassed by possessions, suspicion of other people touching items, obsessive thoughts and actions, fear of running out of an item or in needing it in the future, checking the trash for accidentally discarding objects, functional impairments including loss of living space, social isolation, family or marital discord, financial difficulties, or health hazards. Now some of that's going to hit home too, right? I know that this has caused issues in some people's marital life. I know that for a fact. I know this has caused issues in some people's financial balance. I know that for a fact. To be fair, it's caused stress on both of mine. I'll share a story. When I first started collecting, it was affecting our money. And when I say collecting, I mean collecting seriously. It was affecting our money. It was affecting our bills. Until I started working out a way with my wife in order to kind of keep those scales balanced, in order to keep the household safe and happy, and allow me to kind of pursue an interest. Balance and compromise and prioritizing. That is something I think that is important to keep us balanced, is to prioritize what is important at the end of the day. It's some of the stuff that the dummies have been talking about recently, trying to get this ball kind of rolling to get to this discussion. You know, fear of being judged for the items. I know some of us deal with that. I feel more so younger people, but some of us in general deal with that. Concerns of where we put the things. How often here do we talk about display issues and how to display properly in order to get the biggest bang for your buck visually for enjoyment? These are all things that need to take into account just to make sure that you're collecting kind of responsibly, that you're being responsible as a homeowner or a renter, and that you're not sort of committing to an unhealthy life, to the dark side of the sloth, let's call it. So what are the reasons for hoarding? People hoard because they believe that an item will be useful or valuable in the future, or they feel it has sentimental value, that it's unique or irreplaceable or too big a bargain to throw away. They may also consider an item a reminder that would jog their memory, thinking that without it, they won't remember an important person or event, which kind of ties back into sentimentality, in my opinion. It's most often associated with obsessive compulsive disorders or attention deficit hyperactivity disorders. Although less often, hoarding may be associated with an eating disorder or dementia. Now, I happen to know most of you boys don't have an eating disorder. Not the kind they're talking about anymore. Am I right? Myself included. But what do we have? Sentimentality? How much of us are collecting things from our childhood that tie us back to a simpler time, that make us think of a different era when we were perhaps more carefree, perhaps more happy, or perhaps more disconnected from responsibility? Those are real things. And of course, value, whether that value is perceived or otherwise, right? Because the value of something can change overnight depending on what's announced tomorrow. But both of those things often tie into what we are doing. But here's the big question. Is it diminishing our quality of life, meaning a lack of functional living space or putting ourselves in physical danger? It can also cause anger, resentment, and depression among family members and can affect the social development of children. So kind of repeating themes, right? Priorities, responsibilities, safety. My dad was a fireman. I grew up in a very safety conscious household. We were always looking at our extension cords and making sure that we weren't over. I mean, it was, it's just like anything else, I think. My mom worked for the postal service. We never used UPS or FedEx. Do you know what I mean? Like it was not allowed. My dad was a fireman, so fire safety was a big deal in the house. According to NFPA, the National Fire Protection Association. A particular concern of the fire service is the chaotic nature of the material in many hoarding households. The excessive accumulation of materials in homes poses a significant threat to firefighters and increases the likelihood of a house fire. Many occupants die in these types of fires, often due to blocked exits preventing escape from the home. It also has an additional risk to firefighters for the same reason and puts those living adjacent to occupied structures at a higher risk as well. When you put your family at risk or yourself at risk or your neighbors, you have lost track of priority. But the big question is, what is hoarding versus collecting, right? And they're not the same. In general, collectors have a sense of pride about their possessions, and they experience joy in displaying and talking about them. They usually keep their collection organized, feel satisfied when adding to it, and budget their time and money. Those who hoard usually experience embarrassment about their possessions and feel uncomfortable when others see them. They have clutter, often at the expense of livable space, feel sad or ashamed after acquiring additional items, and they are often Often in debt. Now, debt aside, I feel like this is where most of us do fit in, right? Most of us do curate and take some sort of care of our collection. We do display with pride. We do keep our areas clean so that it's pleasant to walk into. All of these things add to the quality of life as opposed to diminish the quality of life. And that's a big part in the differentiation between collecting and hoarding. Now, obviously, the gag to this is that we've become overwhelmed by these boxes, which is a concern of mine personally. I have a lot of boxes 
boxes kept in a storage area that is beginning to get out of control. And I think I need to have a serious sit down with myself and discuss, discuss, poor choice of words. I don't talk to myself, not in a crazy way, like the normal way, like you do. You do that, right? But in all seriousness, have a sit down with myself and, and kind of consider why I'm keeping them. Am I planning on selling them? I've started toying around with this idea recently. I'm not getting rid of my Star Wars Hot Toys. It's not happening. I'm not getting rid of my DC Hot Toys. It's not happening. Some of my Marvel stuff might be on the chopping block. So maybe I should keep those boxes and let the rest go. I know for a fact I'm not getting rid of that Star Wars stuff. For a fact, as real as this camera is in front of me, I know it, but I haven't let it go. It is taking up space in a storage area where I've even started storing some of the clothes my children have grown out of in their own rooms as opposed to the basement, inconveniencing their living space for mine. Now that might be a lack in being able to make a healthy lifestyle choice in regard to my collection and thus poise with the idea of hoarding. It's something that I'm cognizant of, but I think ultimately what it comes down to is this final bit of statements. Are are you collecting and displaying with pride and keeping a safe display space that doesn't put yourself or family at risk nor diminish the quality of life? You are not hoarding, rest assured. But I might be, just with this stuff. I don't sort it out. I'm working on me. You know what I mean? Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.